In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about different logic circuits, which include adders, as half adder and full adder, shift resistors, counters, multiplexers, and demultiplexers. We know the basic rules of binary addition as 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 1 0, where we get the sum as 0 and carry as 1. Let's design the logical circuits to add the binary numbers. First adder that we will learn is the half adder. The schematic diagram of half adder is as shown. It is used to add two single bit numbers as A and B. From the diagram, the equation for the sum becomes S equals AX or B and equation for the carry becomes C equals A dot B. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Thus, we can represent the truth table of half adder as follows by considering the different combinations of inputs as shown. We will only prove two cases for the sake of simplicity. Consider the case 1 where input A equals 0 and input B equals 0. Thus, we get sum equals A dash B plus AB dash, which comes out to be equal to 0. Similarly, the carry equals a dot b equals 0, dot 0 equals 0. The result matches with the truth table result. Consider case 2 where a equals 1 and b equals 1. After putting these values of a and b into equation of a sum, we get sum equals 0. Similarly, putting these values in the equation of a carry, we get carry equals 1, which again matches with the truth table. Now let's move on to the full adder. As the half adder has only two inputs, we can't use this adder to add three numbers simultaneously. Thus, we join two half adders to form a full adder, which performs the addition of three bits. As we can see, first we add two bits A and B using first half adder and its output is given as input to the second half adder, where input C acts as a second input. Thus as shown, S1 is the sum of half adder 1, C1 is the carry of half adder 1, S is the sum of the entire circuit and C is the carry of the entire circuit. Hence, we can write S1 equals AX or B, C1 equals A dot B, S equals S1 XOR, C dash which is equal to A x or b x or c dash and lastly c2 equals s1 dot c dash which is equal to a x or b dot c dash and total carry is calculated as c equals c1 plus c2 thus for the different combinations of three inputs we get the output of the full adder as represented in the truth table as we have three inputs 2 raised to 3 or 8 combinations are possible. Let's check the truth table by considering only one case where A equals 1, B equals 0 and C dash equals 1. Substituting the values of the inputs into the above four equations we get S1 equals A X or B equals 1 X or 0 equals 1 and C1 equals A dot B equals 1 dot 0 equals 0. For half adder 2, this S1 acts as a first input where second input it receives is C dash. Thus, for the second half adder, C2 equals S1 dot C dash equals 1 dot 1 equals 1. The total carry thus becomes C equals C1 plus C2 equals 0 plus 1 equals 1 and total sum is equal to S1 XOR C dash equals 1 XOR 1 equals 0. Thus, for A equals 1, B equals 0 and C dash is equal to 1, we get sum equals 0 and carry equals 1, which matches the truth table. Moving on to registers. It's a set of n number of flip-flops where each flip-flop stores one bit. Registers perform two basic functions. 
data storage and data movement. The basic types of shift registers are serial in serial out, serial in parallel out, parallel in serial out, parallel in parallel out and bidirectional shift registers. We will first study serial in serial out shift write registers. As we can see, four flip flops are connected in series so that the input will be given in a serial fashion at flip flop 1 and output will also be taken in the serial fashion from flip flop 4. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's assume that we apply inputs as 1010. So, on first clock cycle, LSB bit 0 will appear at the output of the flip flop 0. On the second clock cycle, this 0 will be shifted to the flip flop 1 and flip flop 1 output will be 1. On the third clock cycle, previous two bits will shift to the right and third bit 0 will appear as output across flip flop 0. On the fourth clock, we get LSB bit at the output of the flip flop 3. Thus, we can see that four flip flops hold the values 1010. As the input shifts towards right serially, the name given to this register is serial in serial out shift register. Similarly, we have serial in parallel out shift registers in which we apply the input in serial fashion but take the output from each of the flip flop in parallel manner. Now let's move on to the counters. As the manual counter counts the number from 0 to 9999, we have a counter in digital electronics also which performs the counting operation based on the clock pulses. On first clock pulse it counts 1 and as the clock pulses are applied the counting increases by 1. Shown below is the 4 bit up counter which counts in the upward order from 0000 to 1111. We analyze the working by considering the timing diagram shown below. Here, QA output represents LSB and QD output represents MSB bit. When first clock signal is applied, the counter counts 0000, which is equivalent to 0 in decimal. On the next clock cycle, output QA goes high giving count as 0001 or 1 in the decimal. On the third clock cycle, only QB goes high giving the count as 0010 or simply 2 in the decimal. Similarly, the 16th clock signal will give the count 1111 which is 16 in decimal. Thus, the counter counts from 0000 to 1111 for every clock signal applied. Thus, the name up counter. Let's study the multiplexers and demultiplexers now. A multiplexer is a device which has many inputs and only one output. Whereas, a demultiplexer is a device having only one input and many outputs. To understand this concept, let's consider the example of telephone exchanges of area XYZ and PQR as shown. We have four houses as A, B, C, D in the area XYZ. So the telephone exchange of area XYZ has many inputs, but the output of the exchange XYZ is only one. Hence, the telephone exchange XYZ can forward only one call at a time. This is an example of multiplexers having many inputs but only one output. Similarly, in the area PQR, we have four users again as L, M, N and O. Thus, when telephone exchange PQR receives the call, it can forward that call to any of the four users. This is an example of demultiplexing system having only one input and many outputs. Thus, any exchange acts as a multiplexer or demultiplexer simultaneously. In digital electronics, a multiplexer or MUX is a device which has two rays to N inputs and N select lines. Depending on the combination of the inputs given to the select lines, 
the multiplexer selects which of the two raised to n inputs will go to the output. Shown below is the basic for is to one mux with two select lines as S0 and S1. As two raised to two equals four, we have two select lines. Depending on the combination of the select lines, this multiplexer selects one input from the four. If S0 and S1 are zero, the multiplexer selects I0 as the input. If S1 equals 0 and S0 equals 1, then the multiplexer selects I1 as the input and so on. Thus, depending on the select line values, any one of the four lines appear across the output, that is, it multiplexes the inputs. Opposite to multiplexers is demultiplexers or DMUX. It has one input and many outputs. And depending upon the select line values, the input line is connected to any one of the output lines. In DMUX also, we have two raised to n output lines and n select lines. We consider one is to 4 DMUX as shown below. As we have two raised to two or four output lines, we have two select lines as n equals two. For S1 and S0 equals 0, input is connected to line O0. For S1 equals 0 and S0 equals 1, input line is connected to O1 and so on. Thus, it performs a demultiplexing action. Let's take a quick review of what we have learnt. To add two single bit numbers, we use a half adder logic circuit whose sum is given as A x or b and carry is given as a dot b. We combine two half adders to form a full adder circuit which adds three single bit numbers as a plus b plus c and generates the sum and carry according to the combination of the input. A register is a logic circuit which performs two basic functions data storage and data movement. Different types of registers are Serial in, serial out, serial in, parallel out, parallel in, serial out, parallel in, parallel out, and bidirectional shift registers. Next, logic circuit that we studied was counters. Its basic function is counting, and its count increases by one for every clock signal applied. The next logic circuit that we studied was multiplexer or MUX. It's a device having many inputs and only one output. Select lines decide which input line to multiplex with the output. For two raised to n input lines, we have n select lines. Opposite to MUX is demultiplexer or DMUX. It's a device having one input and many outputs.